In this video, we're going to take a look at viewports. Now, you're going to find viewports to be one of the most important parts of the user interface, and that's simply because they serve as your window into the virtual world in which you're constructing your 3D sets. That's right. And they're also the largest thing that's going to be right here in front of you every time you open up Maya. Gigantic window-looking thing right <laughs> here. Now, everybody, work with me here. Here's what I want you to do. Close your eyes and picture your television set. Oh, I got a better one. Keep your eyes open and stare at your monitor. You're watching this video right now. Good enough. Your monitor, the entire glass portion of your monitor, or the plastic if it's a, <laughs> one of those LCD monitors, picture that as your don't viewport. Don't poke it too hard. Yeah, don't, don't poke it hard. Picture that as your viewport. Yeah. You're looking into it, and there's there's information, there's things going on in there. That's how you see into the world of your computer. So now let's, let's picture the television again. And sure. And picture a camera. Your camera's recording something, and it's going to send a feed to like a television or a television monitor, if sure. you will. So what your camera sees is what you're going to see on your television monitor. Right. And it's exactly how this works inside of Maya. There are a series of cameras by default, mm -hmm. and they are sending feeds, if you will, to these view panels, or what is also commonly known as viewports. Right. So by default, when you first launch Maya, you're looking at the perspective view panel. And that's this guy right here. And while they are called view panels, we're going to refer to them as viewports because that's kind of the common term in the 3D industry when you're sure. dealing with this viewing area. So here we are with a viewport. And with the viewport by default, it is a gray color. And we have what is known as the grid. And the grid's going to become pretty important later on when you start constructing items in your scene. Right. Now, a brief uh, word. In a future lesson, we're going to have detailed instructions over everything this viewport can do. So right now, we're just going to keep it kind of general and just introduce you. Just a quick overview. In viewports, you're always going to find in the bottom basically a label telling you which camera you're looking through. So mm -hmm. right now, there is a camera in the scene known as PERSP. This means perspective. Okay? I thought it meant perspire. Yeah, no, not really. So this is the perspective camera, and it is giving us a feed that is coming over here to this viewport. Now, of course, we need to be able to navigate our viewport, and what that really means is we need to manipulate the position of the camera. Oh, move the camera And around. as we move the camera around, this updated feed is, of course, sent to our viewport. So let's talk about navigating viewports real quick, just so that you guys can get up and running and utilizing Maya quickly. Okay. So what I'm going to do is hold Alt and the left mouse button. And with Alt and the left mouse button, watch what happens. As I move the mouse button back and forth, we are now tumbling around our view. Cool. And I can go up and down as well. Now let's talk about Alt and the middle mouse button. With Alt and the middle mouse button, now what I'm doing is I am tracking my camera. So I'm kind of moving my camera, I guess you could say, uh, perpendicular to the uh, the camera lens. Sure, it's kind of like sliding your camera along a wall without but, yeah, turning it. Absolutely. And now the next thing I want to do is take a look at Alt and the right mouse button. And with Alt and the right mouse button, if I push it away or pull it to me, what I'm doing is I am dollying the camera. I can also slide it left and right as well. This is different than zooming the camera right. because we are physically moving the camera forwards and we're moving it backwards. Right. When you zoom a camera, technically you're sp uh, speaking about moving the lenses further apart. You're actually adjusting the focal angle of the camera. In this case, we're not. We're literally taking the camera and pushing it into our scene and pulling it out. That's correct. Now, with a viewport, we're basically looking at two key things. One is this large viewing area. Right. The other is all of our view panels have a menu bar at the top. And so up here at this menu bar, you'll notice we've got things to control what we see, shading, lighting, things that we can or cannot see inside the viewport itself, and then panels, which allows us to control what we see on this panel, because it doesn't have to necessarily be a viewport. Right. The panel could be switched to view something else. But in this particular case, it's set to a perspective viewport. Now, the next thing I want to talk about quickly is that there's not just one viewport in your scene. No. If I tap my space bar, think... Look at this. We're now looking at four viewports, each viewport containing a viewing area and, of course, a panel menu bar, as we're seeing here. And these panel, panel menu bars, you're going to find that they're going to change based off what is being viewed in that panel. That's right, because you don't necessarily have to have a viewport in this panel. Well, a quick example of that is if I come over here to panels, even though a lot of this won't make sense to those of you yet, I can come down here to panel, and I can change that panel to, let's say, an outliner. So you'll notice I'm no longer receiving a feed from a camera in this panel. Instead, the panel has now been assigned to a, a tool. Well, not a tool. That's what right. I'm looking for. Like a utility panel. A utility. There you go. So here we are looking at an outliner where we're seeing a list of the objects that are currently available in the scene that I can select. And we start out right here with four hidden cameras. Perspective, top, front, and side. And these are those cameras I was talking about. As a matter of fact, you can see the camera icons over here. These are the cameras that are f sending feeds back to this viewport, perspective, 
top camera sending it over here to the top viewport the front viewport and of course a second ago I had this set up as a side viewport right and this ties right back into your television analogy because in this case we've kind of changed the channel we're no longer looking at a camera <laughs> feed that's right we're looking at another piece of information altogether exactly so what I'm going to do is come back up here to panel oh, by the way take a look at the panel uh, menu bar it is different than the menu bar up here. Very cool. Again, the menu bar will change based off of what information needs to be available to the user with the panel that's being displayed. So coming up here to panels, I'm now just going to simply come back down to panel. And uh, actually, in this particular case, since I don't want to switch to any other of the utility type panels, I want to switch back to a camera. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come up here to orth orthographic. Right. <laughs> I'm working on it there. It's all good. And I'm going to come over here and switch back to side. Right. And this is imp pretty important. Basically, it shows you how you can go about changing one of your viewports so that you're looking through a different camera. So let's say I wanted this guy to look through perspective just like this one is over here. I could come up here to panels, come down to perspective, and say perspective. And you'll notice I have two perspectives going on. Very cool. So now if I rotate one, what's interesting is as I am tumbling this one camera around, keep in mind, as soon as I let go, it's got to update the one on the right too. Bink, as seen there. Because they're both receiving the same feed. That's right. I moved the one camera around. That one camera is sending its signal to this viewport and this viewport. So if I come over here, I'll go ahead and rotate that around as well. Okay, so let's come back up here to panels, come back down to orthographic, and change it back to a top view. So the difference between these three viewports, so one, two, three, and this viewport is what, Zach? Well, the uh, orthographic views, being the top, the front, and the side views, don't show any depth. That's right. These are going to be like looking at blueprints of a building. These where are you orthogonal views. Orthog orthogonal views is a really <laughs> tricky word to get out sometimes. Uh, Flat 2D, non-objective. Right. Well, you can actually you can view this uh, kind of live and in your head if you just kind of use your imagination. Take your hands and put them up in front of your face so that you can see them. Have you, maybe your right hand real close to your face and your left hand as far away as you can reach, which I'm actually doing right now. It looks kind of funny. Yes, it does. But you'll notice that your left hand looks smaller than your right hand because it's further away. That's because of perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, the persp, the perspective view inside of Maya, actually will show perspective, which you can see here, because you can see that the grid appears to be getting smaller as it recedes into the distance. That's right. Now, in the orthographic views, if you could possibly show your two hands in the same situation in an orthographic view, they would both appear to be the same because depth is not taken into account. And you can see here, all of the grids look exactly alike no matter which part of the viewport you're looking at. That's correct. So, um, so anyways, that's the difference between our top front side and our perspective view. As I can come over here in the perspective view and tumble around by using the alt and left mouse button, I cannot do that in top front and side. Right. Okay. Though of course you can unlock that setting, but that's more for advanced users that really know how to deal with an orthographic user type 3D view, Ooh -hoo -hoo. which isn't really <laughs> 3D because there's no depth involved. Yeah, so it's yeah, kind of scary. It is. So uh, one final thing that I want to talk about in regards to the viewports, and that is whichever viewport is currently active will always have this dark colored in border around it. Okay. So we can see right now the perspective view is our active viewport. Right. If I click down here, now our front view panel is our active viewport. Whichever viewport your mouse is over, when you go to perform an operation, is the viewport that will respect that operation even if it is not currently active. A minute ago, you saw that I was able to hit the space bar. Just simply tap it and go from a large perspective full screen like this, tap down to a small one. Right. If I simply move my mouse over the front view panel and tap my mouse again, or yeah. tap your space bar. Or tap my, tap my space bar. He's not clicking the mouse at all. I promise I'm not. You'll notice what happens there is now the front went full screen, and it is also the active panel. Right. So Maya is actually reading the location of your mouse on the screen. Right. So one final example, side view, it is not active. Tap, we tap get space view. bar again, tap space bar again, tap space bar again. Okay? So that's the view panels. That is how you navigate them by using a combination of the alt key and your mouse click buttons or mouse buttons <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um, that's pretty much all we want to show you at the moment to get you going right there's a future lesson coming up very soon that is going to show the viewports in depth along with all of their settings and modes and different functions you can perform within them to keep track of what you're looking at in your scene that's right so with that that's going to wrap up this lesson on the viewports